So you're wanting to leave your employee job and start freelancing. How are you going to do that? When do you quit? You've got a family to support and this transition is giving you a bit of anxiety. If you haven't already, check out the previous episodes of this employee to freelancer series where I talk about how to figure out what to do as a freelancer and how to convert your resume into a freelancer portfolio. In this episode, we're going to focus more so on the next step, which involves actually finding clients and working your way towards quitting your job and knowing what milestones you need to hit before deciding whether it is time to quit your job or not. Welcome to the show, Go Back to Bed, where we wake up early to discuss how to balance and build a business and a family when they're all under the same roof. Whether you call yourself a freelancer, entrepreneur, or small business owner, you love working at home, or you would like to, because family comes first. I'm Chad Grevelaze, and I am a full-time husband and dad first, part-time entrepreneur, work-from-home enthusiast, and self-employment advocate. In our conversations, you won't just learn philosophy, you'll get practical advice from me and other self-employed families so that you can start your day with clear priorities and confidence to pursue your goals. Join our conversations so you can create the work-life balance that every family needs. So what do you need to do before you quit your nine to five? How do you start finding clients? How do you get those first steps achieved? Before you quit your job, you need to start earning some income on the side. And this is when it would be called something like a side hustle that then will become your full-time freelance business. And you may be lucky enough to completely replace your income with your side hustle before you quit your job. Um, But that's definitely the exception and not the rule. It really depends on what you're doing uh, as a freelancer. Most people will have a gap uh, where you don't have enough income yet from your freelancing to replace your full-time job. And in order to keep increasing your freelance income, you need to quit your full-time job just so you can have the time to invest into your business that you need to in order to increase the income and increase your revenue. So I quit my job when I had one client. Um, Now I may have jumped the gun a little too early, but I was getting very impatient with my employee job and I knew that it wouldn't continue to work for me. But it took a few months before I found some more clients and actually replaced my full-time income and I had no savings to buffer me. So I sank into tons of credit card debt. I don't recommend you do the same. try to be more prepared than I was. And so I, that definitely doesn't have to be you. The first thing you need to do is sit down with your spouse and create a financial plan for how you're going to navigate this transition. If you're able to get a three month emergency fund in place, then great. Um, where you have three months worth of expenses in savings. If you're barely earning enough with your employee job and you've been living paycheck to paycheck, um, then you're going to need to accept a more gradual process with building up your freelancing uh, to that point where you can quit. Your financial plan should really include how much money your day job is bringing in right now, whether there's any extra, where is that extra going to go, and if you have some debt already, you need to start paying down that debt. If you don't have any savings, then you've got to build up a savings. I recommend building up an emergency savings of at least $1,000, then start paying down your debt, then increase your emergency savings after you've paid off at least credit card debt. Definitely make sure that you have credit card debt paid off. The more debt you have, the more restricted you're going to be when you're building up your freelance business with what you can invest in in growing that business. This financial plan should also include how many hours you'll be putting in per week to this new business that you're building up. Um, It'll also have what steps you're taking to build that business. What are the specific activities you're doing on a weekly and daily basis? And step one could just be getting educated. That for a couple of months, you're just getting educated on how to freelance and how to get things going um, and even practicing, developing some sales skills and so forth. Uh, Step two could be investing into a small online course or even joining a coaching program for freelancing. And step three would be actually starting the process of finding clients uh, where you already know what you're doing as a freelancer, uh, you know what you're going to be doing as a service, and you've started to build up uh, some skills and 
uh, the education that you need, and now you're trying to find clients. At this point in the process, we're going to pretend that you know what you want to do as a freelancer. You've gotten some education on on how to freelance and how to get your business started. And now you're at the point where you need to start finding those first few clients and start testing the waters with actual paid gigs. The easiest way to start finding clients is through a freelancer marketplace like Upwork, Fiverr, Freelancer.com. These are where companies are already looking for freelancers and they're posting jobs specifically for certain projects or long-term hires. And all you have to do is set up a profile and look for jobs there and start submitting proposals. Um, and you really should be submitting several proposals for, per day because your closing rate will be a lot lower at first as far as which proposals turn into interviews and then turn into actual clients. But this is an opportunity for you to build up your sales skills, practice writing proposals, and you'll get some interviews and then you can practice doing interviews and getting on those sales calls and eventually you'll start finding clients. Now I've got other episodes specifically on how to close deals with clients and how to conduct those sales calls. Episode 17 of the podcast is one where I go into great detail in enrolling clients. So be sure to read that or watch that. Um, I won't cover the same material here that I covered there. And besides submitting proposals for job posts on these freelancer marketplace sites, start spreading the word through friends and family. Just start telling people in your network what you do and what you're offering. And don't rely totally on friends and family. I know that might be your comfort zone, but when I tried to put too much emphasis on relying on friends and family, it really didn't help me go very far. Um, I had to get out of my comfort zone and talk to new people that I didn't know. I even went to some networking events um, and I started to connect with people on LinkedIn and online. And the reason why you can't really rely on friends and family to really get your business going is that they have a hard time seeing you um, objectively as a business owner. They see you as their friend. They see you as their brother or their son. Um, so it kind of gets in the way of, of creating a, a true business relationship. Um, but it could help you get some initial gigs under your belt that can help you build your portfolio, you know, that a friend or a friend of a friend or a friend of a family member, um, can give you some projects and that can help you add stuff to your portfolio. So it can help a little bit, but don't rely on it completely and really just audit, just audit your professional network as well. And anyone that may be a business connection and who you're connected to on LinkedIn currently, um, anyone through previous employers or colleagues, and just see if there's anyone worth reaching out to that you think could be connected to a potential job opportunity for what you're doing as a freelancer. Uh, definitely update your LinkedIn profile uh, because clients will check you out there even if you're not, um, even if you're using something like Upwork, a lot of clients will still try to find you on LinkedIn to, to do some research on you. Um, so you want your profile to reflect your current freelance uh, ventures and what you're doing as a freelancer. Now, depending on your job, you will have to be careful with this because if your employer is connected to you on LinkedIn and they see you updating your profile that you say you're freelancing, uh, they might confront you about that and ask whether you're planning to leave your job, um, which could end up ending your job prematurely. So you just have to be careful about where you advertise your services. Um, but you need to use everything you possibly can. Definitely a freelancer marketplace like Upwork, Fiverr would be the best place to advertise your services um, where you're not in, you're not really gonna be that visible to your employer. Now, a simple trick that I did, which doesn't apply to everyone, is my very first freelance client was my employer. <laughs> um, so the job I was doing for my employer was that I was a video editor and I was getting an employee salary for that. And then I wanted to start doing freelance video editing. So I just pitched it to them that, hey, um, should we change the relationship here? And instead of you paying me as an employee, you can pay me as a contractor. I keep doing all the same things I'm doing for you right now, but you're just paying me as a contractor. And uh I crunched some numbers for them um, because I would have to increase my hourly rate charging them as a freelancer opposed to charging them as an employee. I also told them that I'd be able to put in less hours 
because it was rare that I actually f was able to fill the whole 40 hours that was required as a full-time employee. So I was like, I can get everything done that needs to get done in like 20 hours a week. You'll be, and ultimately I conv I showed them the numbers that they would be saving money if they hired me as a freelancer because they wouldn't be paying for a full-time salary. They wouldn't be paying for other benefits that are included with being an employee. It's expensive to have employees. Employees are sometimes three times as expensive for the company as their actual salary is. Um, so it was pretty easy to show them that it was in their best interest to pay me as a contractor. Um, and so I was able to convert my employer into my first client. Uh, now it took me a while uh, to start adding other clients uh, into into my work schedule because I was so used to just working for them and I almost attached myself too much to them as being my comfort zone of, okay, they're actually giving me 20 hours a week worth of work. I don't really need to look for other clients. And all I'd, I had done at that point though is I was literally just replacing my salary but I wasn't increasing my income and my initial salary wasn't enough to really move my family forward. So I, eventually I realized that I had to start finding other clients and my second client was somebody that my employer knew. Um, and then from there, I uh, then started getting on Upwork and started finding clients there. And then it just grew from there. Um, but that is one avenue that you can take that if you're going to freelance doing something similar to what you're currently doing as an employee, your current employer can become your first client. Just don't make the mistake I did where you let that become a comfort zone and you didn't bother looking for other clients, I would immediately start finding other clients um, and don't just rely on that alone. The goal during this transition process of preparing to quit your job is to really get as much education as possible as your number one priority. Uh, you want to get as much knowledge as you can about freelancing and building up your business while you still have the income from your full-time job um, so that you at least have that learning curve done and obviously it's a continual learning curve, but at least you know enough uh, to get your business started. Then second to that, your second priority is to learn, well, this is assuming you already have the skill that you're selling. So if you wanna be a freelance video editor and you don't know how to edit videos yet, then you're gonna have to spend quite a bit of time learning that first, right? That's, that's you have to have a skill to sell uh, before you can start freelancing. So if you don't have a skill to sell, then you gotta work on that first. Then you work on getting educated on building a freelance business around that. Then your next priority is to work on your sales skills. You have to get education on how to sell your talents and your skills as a service, as a freelancer, how to enroll clients. And I teach quite a bit on that and you can learn from other people as well. And then practicing that will involve, like I said earlier, submitting proposals to jobs on these job sites getting on sales calls and actually trying to enroll clients. You don't really learn the skill until you practice it. So if you can at least do those three things, build up the skill that you're selling, gain knowledge on how to start and grow a freelance business and learn sales skills and start practicing those sales skills before you quit your job, you'll be way more prepared than I was uh, because my initial attempt at freelancing I lost my job suddenly, so I didn't really have a choice but to just get thrusted into freelancing, and I didn't know what I was doing, so I spent nine months just really struggling with it, and then I went back to my full-time job, and then a year later, I quit, <laughs> um, but when I quit, I had gone through at least the educational process, I knew more about how to build up a freelance business, and I already had the skill that I was selling, which was video editing, um, and I also started to learn some sales skills, but I could have taken that even further before I quit as far as the sales part. So there was even more of a gap for me. And then your fourth priority is to even find that first client before you quit your job or your first couple of clients. Then you're going to be really prepared because you're already earning some income from a base of clients that you're doing work for on the side. Maybe you're putting in 10 hours a week at this point. Um, now, that's going to be a struggle to sustain long term because let's say you have a 40 hour a week job and you're putting 10 hours into your freelance business that's 50 hours a week if the whole point of freelancing is to have more time with your family where well, you're definitely not going to have more time with your family right now um so 
you want to make that leap as soon as possible. And if you're as prepared as you can be financially to make that leap, then you quit that job. And yeah, you only have 10 hours of freelance work. But now that you have 40 hours that just got freed up, you have all the time in the world to get on a bunch of sales calls. And within a couple of weeks, you can start finding some more clients and start building that up because you already have a portfolio from the first few clients. Um, you already have some momentum there. So you getting to that next stage of getting from 10 to 20, 25 hours a week worth of work, and it's now replacing your, your full-time salary that you're getting, you could do that in a matter of weeks if you really hustle. And you, you're prepared with the education and the knowledge and the sales skills. Those sales skills are key to you being able to get those clients quicker. In this transition overall, it really largely depends on the type of freelance work you're doing. Chances are uh, you'll only have time in the early morning or the night for your side hustle. Something like consulting would be difficult because most clients will want to get on consulting calls during normal business hours, which is when you're likely going to be doing your day job. Um, but if you're pursuing gig-based work, uh, graphic design, editing videos, writing, blogging, or anything that doesn't have to do with getting on a call with a client, uh, then that is better suited while having an employee job because you can easily do that early morning, late at night, or whatever. One of the best ways to start building up your freelance business is to, on the side, while you still have your employee job, is to wake up early. You're going to be fresher early in the morning. Your brain's going to be sharper and more focused. You're going to get more done. You're going to be more creative and inspired. Um, evenings were always hard for me, especially with having a family and kids. I'm not going to be putting in time in the evening um, into my freelance business. I got to help with family stuff. So what I did is I would wake up at 5 or 6 a.m. and I would spend one to two hours on my freelance business before anyone in my family woke up and uh, before my day job began. And that was key to me being able to start to build that up. And I was fortunate enough where my employee job, my second one right before I started freelancing, um, allowed me to work at home. So I was already working at home during the day. Um, it gave me a little bit more flexibility with building up a freelance business. So if you're in that situation now, and since the uh, pandemic, there's a higher chance that you are in that situation where you're working at home, it will be a little bit easier to put in that time for your business and even maybe put in a little bit of time during the day uh, when you're not working on your on your normal job. If you're in a similar situation as me and you have a family, I recommend the early morning. Um, some people will just work late at night after kids are in bed, but I don't recommend that because your brain will not be as sharp. Your brain will be tired and you're just not going to make as good of decisions when it comes to how to build things up and you're not gonna have the same kind of focus. You're gonna have all the day's stress clouding your, your, your brain. You wanna make sure you're getting enough sleep before midnight and waking up early. That's gonna be better for you, even health-wise. So after a couple of months of getting educated and gaining the skills you need to not only provide the service you're providing in freelancing, but sales skills, and you found your first couple of clients, how do you know when it's time to pull the plug on your normal job? It's going to totally depend on your unique situation. How much money do you have in savings? Um, that will definitely impact how soon you can quit. Again, there will always be a gap in most instances where you won't be earning enough yet in your freelancing uh, in order to replace your employee salary. So you're really, really just going to have to make this decision with your spouse and make sure that you have timelines in place for when you have to fully replace your employee income after quitting. And by this point, a great number to have would be how many proposals do you have to submit to get X amount of interviews to get X amount of clients or gigs? Uh, if you know that number, then you'll know how many proposals you have to send per day after you quit your job to get the amount of clients you need to get in order to replace your income. And that's what your goal then ends up being. And you have to stick to those number goals. You don't get to just uh, you know, send proposals whenever you want. You have to commit to that goal if you plan on actually hitting your sales goals to then replace your income and make sure that you're really committing uh, to that number. And you're not going to have the luxury at first to only submitting a few proposals every once in a while. Um, you're going to have to submit a lot more proposals and spend a lot more time doing sales than you are actually doing client work. But but once you invest that time and you start getting clients, then it will decrease. The amount of time you're spending in sales will start to go downhill and the amount of time you're spending doing client work 
slash the money you're earning uh, will go up. Um, but you have to be willing to put in that time initially to all the sales. Now, one, one option is to have a backup plan that if you hit a certain deadline by which you have to replace your income to avoid getting into debt, um, then you your backup plan is to go get a part-time job somewhere to, to uh, help buffer that a little bit. Now, not a full-time job, because if you're going back to get a full-time job, you're basically giving up on freelancing. You're not going to have the time to invest in your business, um, and you're going to push things off uh, more than you really need to. That's what I did. I went back and got a full-time job, and all it did was delay me building up my freelance business by a whole year, and it was really unnecessary. Um, I could have found a part-time job to help buffer the finances a little bit. Now, in my case, when I went back and got a full-time job, I didn't have, I hadn't worked through all these steps yet. So, you know, maybe it was good for me to go back and get a full-time job because I, I didn't have any education yet on how to freelance. I already knew how to video edit it, but I didn't have any education on how to build a freelance business. I didn't know how to sell. So I almost did need more time to build up those skills. I hadn't worked through those steps yet. But in your case, you shouldn't have to do that because you're learning right now what you have to do while you still have your full-time job. Because when I went back to my full-time job, I still had a family, I was a new dad. And so when I was working then a full-time uh, employee job again, I didn't have the time to really invest in my freelance business. Um, so it's not like I really made a ton of progress uh, during that time. Ultimately, you'll know when to make the leap because you'll feel peaceful about it. You and your spouse will feel peaceful about it. There isn't a formula that's really perfect for knowing when to quit your job. Um, I gave you some indicators of things you ought, of some milestones you ought to hit uh, before you consider quitting your job um, to help you know when you're ready enough, that you have the education on freelancing, you've submitted a bunch of proposals and practiced your sales skills, you know how to build a freelance business to an extent, and you already have a skill that you're selling, um, and you even have a bit of a portfolio that you can use in that sales process. So those things will give you a head start when it's time to quit your job, but just make sure that you and your spouse are totally on the same page before you quit your job and you have a solid plan to navigate the transition, a solid financial plan, a solid plan for what you're gonna be doing in your business and uh, what milestones you need to be hitting uh, before you quit. So that's it for today. Be sure to subscribe on YouTube if you want, want more content like this and head over to airlight.tv to see show notes for this episode. I wish you the best as you make this transition from employee to freelancer, all while raising a family. Reach out to me if you want some customized help, and I can plug you into some of my programs. If you don't want customized help, then be sure to keep tuning into this podcast and watching the other videos that I create. Until next time.